In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with the Where I Am business rules. Business rules implement business logic of your application. They are always associated with some business object, and they handle object behavior, validation, calculation, state changes, and so on. A Where I Am executes business rules whenever the corresponding business object is created or modified. It does not matter whether the object is created or modified by the user, by a process, or by another rule. All rules associated with the business object will be checked and fired if necessary. So let's look at an example. I have a custom object here from the previous tutorials. Let's assume that our system should only accept customers older than a certain age. So if an operator creates a customer younger than the limit, the system will issue an error message and refuse to accept the customer. So my rule should look like this. If the customer's age is less than some value, then report an error mes message. Let's attach this rule to the custom object. To do this, I select the Update Rules tab at the bottom of the screen. And then I click on the Add button to create a new rule. Let's give it a name. A rule consists of conditions, which are optional by the way, represented by the green area here, and actions, represented by the yellow area. Let's start with conditions. At any time, when entering the text of the rule, I can press the F3 key, or Option key on a Mac, to open a context assistant that can help me build my rule. The context assistant displays appropriate constructs of the rule language that I can use as I type, and I can select any value that the context assistant displays. Here we need to calculate the age of the customer based on his date of birth, and if it's less than, say, 18, report an error. All available functions in a, in a where I am can be displayed using the F4 key or Shift Option combination on a Mac. I can see all functions here, and the explanation for each function is in the yellow area on the right. So here we select the age function, and specify customer date of birth as a parameter for the function. The age has to be less than 18 to be invalid. When referring to an attribute of the object, we should always use the name of the object first, followed by dot, and then the name of the attribute. Now our condition has been completed, and we can specify the action. The context assistant prompts for all available actions, and the explanation of for each action is given in the yellow area to the right. So we select the report arrow action, and then we specify the error message that we want to be displayed. Our rule has now been completed. We can see how it looks in the textual format. The textual format can be used directly for more complex rules that cannot be specified using the standard view. Before I show you how the rule works, I will enable the log viewer, 
that will show us in detail how AwareIM executes rules. To do this, I must go to the AwareIM control panel, select the logging item from the settings menu, and then select the appropriate logger. Since we will be running our application in the testing mode, I will select the test logger. The level of logging will be set to full, which is the default value. Now I click OK, and the log viewer will now open. So I log into the application using the browser, and I can see the list of existing customers. And here I can also create a new one. Let's create a customer younger than 18. As soon as I click Create, the system displays the error message and does not accept the customer. Let's see how AwareIM does it behind the scenes. We go to our log viewer and look at what's in there. The note here identifies the moment when the user hit the Create button. AwareIM started to execute the rules associated with the customer. There are several rules here, the one that we have created explicitly and some predefined rules that AwareIM has created automatically to enforce mandatory fields and choices for attribute values. Our rule is evaluated last and as you can see its condition is, a, is evaluated to true since the age of the customer is less than 18. The action of the rule is added to the agenda and executed later here. And then the whole operation is aborted. Let's now create a customer older than 18 years old. As you can see, the customer has been accepted. If we look at the log viewer now, evaluation of the condition was false and so our action was not fired. Note that the rule will be fired not only when an object is created but also when it's modified. Let's find the customer that we have just created and try to modify it to make it invalid. So I change the date of birth back to 2001 and try to save it. And we can see the error message here. So as you can see the rule ex is executed again and we cannot make our customer younger than 18. Let me show you some other, more complex rules. I have added a relationship to our custom object with the contact node object that stores the details of the communication, such as its duration in minutes, subject and date. In the custom object, this relationship is represented by the communication attribute. Let's calculate total duration of all communications of a particular customer. I have added an attribute to the customer object called total communication duration, which will store the result of our calculation. This attribute will be calculated because we will calculate the value of this attribute using rules. Let's add a rule that will calculate the sum of durations of all communications related to our customer. 
we'll give it a name this rule will have no conditions the attribute is calculated as the sum of all durations for those communication records that belong to our customer. This is specified using the IN condition. Customer total communication duration is equal to sum of contact known duration where contact node in customer communication. This rule will do the job properly, but it's not very efficient because it will be executed every time the customer object is changed, no matter what the change was. To make the rule more efficient, we will add a condition that will execute the rule only when there is a change in the associated communication. Let's say that we also want to show to the user the date of the last communication with the customer. I have created an attribute for this called last communication. And we will add a rule to calculate it every time a new communication has been added or removed for the customer. Adding or removing a communication is really a change to the list of associated communication records. So the condition of our rule needs to check again whether the list of communication records has been changed. So the condition of the rule is if customer communication was changed. The action of the rule should find all communication records associated with the customer, then sort them in descending order of dates and pick the first one. This can be done using the find action. Now we can assign the date of the found communication to our attribute. Well, I hope this tutorial gives you a good introduction into a where I am rules. The rule language is very powerful and it includes many different actions, expressions, and functions. For more details about the rule language, see the user guide and also the rule language reference guide. I also recommend that you watch the processes tutorial right after this one. The processes tutorial explains how processes are different from business rules and explains actions that deal with the user interface.